I am Evi Pitura. I am from the Department of Computer Science and Engineering um, from in the University of Ioana here in Greece. My talk will be a little bit different than the previous one. I will try to highlight some issues and challenges related to historical uh, QDs on graphs. So why historical QDs? Uh, what's the motivation? Almost all uh, real-world graphs uh, change over time. They're not static objects. And this refers to both their structure, that is, edges, new connections are, are uh, created, um, new nodes enter the system, um, connections are deleted, nodes are deleted, so the structure of the network, the underlying network changes all the time. And this also applies to the content of the graph. Um, both the properties and the content associated with nodes and uh, edges changes over time. So um, we can model such evolving graphs as a sequence of uh, graph snapshots. So I have a toy example here. You have, uh, uh, we have three uh, snapshots, three graph snapshots, uh, time instances one, two, and, uh, and three. Okay, now the challenge is uh, how to store and pro process such uh, graph snapshots and how to, uh, what type of queries uh, to ask about these evolving graphs and how to process such queries. And this is applies, applies both to analytical processing and graph mining, to algorithms, if you prefer, uh, including uh, community evolution, page rank, computing diameters. But here I will focus on online query uh, processing. Okay, so, uh, so far we have queries that refer only to one snapshot, to the current snapshot. Uh, historical queries are queries that refer to the, spa, to the past. And we can have uh, different kinds of historical queries as normal queries on graphs, uh, reachability queries, shortest path queries, regular expression, or graph patterns. And we can talk about two general types of queries. Uh, we have single snapshot queries. So you ask a query and you want to, to uh, find all the items that are valid during a specific, a single specific snapshot. And then we have uh, multiple, uh, multiple snapshot queries that are more like, challenging. And um, um, you want to find the results uh, that are valid uh, through an interval. And then in this case, we can have different semantics. We can have conjunctive semantics. So we want in our results to have all items or edges uh, or vertices that are uh, valid at all time instances in the, in, in the interval. Then we can have disjunctive. So we want to have uh, uh, elements that are active at at least one snapshot, and then we can have uh, other type of semantics, like we want uh, in our results elements that are valid at at least uh, k uh, of the snapshots. Okay. Uh, besides uh, historical queries, we can have queries about the evolution itself. So for example, uh, what is the first time that a pattern appeared? Or the maximum time interval where a specific pattern was uh, present? How many times a specific pattern, uh, graph pattern, for example, uh, appeared. Uh, and then we may want to uh, mo monitor the evolution of uh, graph patterns uh, in uh, QWERTY. So, uh, and one can think of a new range of such uh, uh, graph queries on the evolution of the graphs. Uh, now, historical queries are different than queries on dynamic graphs. Sure, graphs uh, uh, change, and then we have queries on graphs that change, but the, in this case, we just want results that are applicable to the current snapshot. And they are different than graph streams, because in streams, we assume that storage is limited. Here we have uh, all past, uh, past snapshots uh, stored. So, uh, I have um, give, given an idea of the type of uh, historical uh, queries that we can think of. Now we'll just present a few ideas of, uh, and uh, relate to research on how to store such queries, uh, such uh, sequences, how to process queries on them, and how to do indexing. Um, okay, of, of course, uh, there are two fundamental approaches to storing a sequence of graphs. One is uh, using deltas. That means uh, you stores just a selected, selected uh, graph snapshot, one or more or none, and then you just uh, uh, also store a log of, uh, of operations. And then to create any of these snapshots, you just apply this log on the, on the snapshot that you have materialized. Uh, for example, you, can, you may store the first, the first graph in the sequence, and then an operational log of the form add edge one, uh, one, two, 
uh, delete edge, uh, rather uh, delete edge one, two, add the uh, edge uh, two, four, and so on. Um, there has been some work on the topic. Um, it's not as easy as it seems. There are many variations, which snapshots to store, uh, how to combine deltas, how to uh, store deltas in memory, how to store deltas in, on disk. Okay, so this is the first approach, just store deltas. The second approach is a, a versioning approach. So you store the, the union graph, the graph that involves all nodes and all edges, and then you do versioning. Um, you annotate all elements, node, edges, properties, with validity intervals. Again, there are many issues. Um, these graphs get very large, how to store them, and how to process them. Okay, uh, another, uh, another po point I wanted to make about storage is, re is related to, to locality. Uh, graphs are known for, for their poor, lo pure, poor, poor locality, uh, and what we usually do with graphs is we tr try to take advantage of their structural locality. So we try to uh, store together nodes uh, that are near in, on, in the graph. Um, historical graphs introduce a new form of locality that is temporal locality. So we may want to store together um, nodes, elements in general that refer to, uh, po see, po to, points, uh, uh, to points that are near in time. So in, when you have historical uh, graphs, when you have sequence of graphs, you have different forms of locality that you may want to combine. Okay, so uh, some general ideas of how to process uh, those queries. There is a single straightforward way to do it, that is meta realize the, the necessary snapshot, create them, and then uh, apply your favorite algorithm on the meta realized snapshots. Um, okay, this is, this takes a lot of time because you uh, have to reconstruct all the snapshots. And then there have been uh, another interesting proposal uh, that is called find, verify, and fix. Uh, the main idea here is that instead of applying your algorithm to all snapshots, do some form of clustering. So at a pre-processing step, step, you cluster together snapshots that are similar uh, and maintain one representative per cluster. Uh, the authors maintain the union graph and the intersection graph. Then you apply your algorithm on the representative of each cluster, and you try to see um, for each snapshot in the cluster whether the solution you get is valid or not. If it's valid, fine. If it's not valid, then you go on applying the algorithm on, the, on each individual snapshot. Of course, uh, this is a, a new topic of research, so one can think of different ways of doing historical queries on graphs. For example, uh, you may first find the, 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 you may first select or filter the graph ba based on other preconditions, not time-dependent preconditions, and then select subgraphs that are related uh, to, to the, uh, and then select and materialize snapshots only for part of the graphs that satisfy your filtering conditions. Okay. But what about non-monotonic queries like so you have a non-existence clause. Okay, uh, for, for this, uh, verify and fix. So then you first look at the whole union graph. You see, oh, there's something exists. So this is not valid. But that's a wrong decision because the thing that didn't that existed yes. was outside the version. Yeah, yeah, that, that's applicable. This, uh, this is not a general technique. It's yeah. applicable to, to a specific type of queries. Okay. So the author, the authors try this for shortest path. So if you or distance queries, in general, it cannot be applied in general. But the idea. The, the main idea may be changed to be applicable to other types of queries. So the main idea is to do some form of clustering. Um, okay, and then um, uh, there are other uh, new topics for research. For example, uh, there have been proposals of various types of indexing, indexes uh, specific for uh, graph uh, queries like reachability uh, indexes, shortest path indexes, or patterns. Um, I have two examples of such indexes. For example, for its ability, uh, for each node, the idea for its ability is for each node to keep what is called two hop uh, code or label. Uh, and uh, um, this label consists of two parts, uh, such that for each pair of nodes, uh, you, 
uh, u, uh, v in G, v is reachable from u, if and only if uh, the intersection of these two uh, set of labels is, uh, not, not, is not empty. Basically, you, can, you, you are trying to find nodes that are all are on at least at le uh, one path uh, that connects uh, to nodes. Similar ideas uh, have been, uh, similar indexes have been proposed for shortest path queries based on landmark. So the idea here is that you select a specific node, you maintain your distance for specific node, uh, and then instead of uh, uh, computing shortest path distances for all nodes, you use the pre-computed distances to save up uh, some computations. Now, all these indexes are applicable to, for one snapshot. Uh, can we extend them? Uh, is it possible to extend them or propose different indexes for uh, evolving graphs? Uh, what is a good selection of uh, landmark, or landmark nodes or a good selection of uh, uh, nodes for two hop index in the case of evolving graphs? Um, intuitive, intuitively, you want to uh, select nodes that cover many other nodes in many snapshots, not just one. Okay, so uh, there has been some previous work. Uh, we have also uh, looked into one of these problems, reachability, the disability queries. Um, we have used uh, an approach based on, um, on versioning, so we have edge labels that are interval sets. Uh, we use bit vectors so we can do traversal uh, faster using intersections, um, bitwise operations for intersection. And, oops, and You have an animation. Mm. Yeah. <coughs> Please just show, just show okay. it. Okay, I'll show the slides, yeah. Okay, so. It's, it's very slow. Just zoom out, just zoom out. Okay, zoom out. Zoom out. No, no. Okay, that's great. Okay. Okay, so. Sorry for that. Uh, we also try to identify uh, strongly connected components uh, through uh, different snapshots and try to find the minimum number of such uh, strongly connected components. And we used, uh, uh, the bipartite mapping for that. Okay, so this was a very general and quick introduction to uh, historical queries. Uh, so, uh, what I wanted to, to say in this talk is that there is more than the current snapshot and it's important to look into the type of queries that involve the whole sequence and how to process them. Okay. And uh, here is a, a short list of, of some of uh, related work on the topic. There is other great work on, being done on that, so this is uh, only a partial list of papers. And that's the end of the, my talk. Thank you. Uh, well, just to comment, I want to thank you. It was very uh, instructive, and I've been thinking actually about mm -hmm. the, the temporal dimension. So, sure. thank you for presenting it as a survey. I'm looking forward to actually going through the slides. Have you thought about the implication on uh, query languages and how to, you said here's a bunch of queries, but uh, probably like there's some extensions to query languages to express those better. Uh, you know. Yeah, uh, that's that's. And I think also there's here an opportunity for combining uh, machine learning or, or linear regression or kind of regression types of things. For example, we, we've been getting this question of, you know, like I'm a semantic publishing person, like I'm Thompson Reuters, I track topics. I'd like to know how topics are evolving over time. So this is a very good use case, which is take a citation network, uh, uh, then create a time series of it. Uh, compute page rank uh, or compute some centrality measure, mm -hmm. and then use machine learning to predict uh, the the, the which which topics will become more important in the future? Yeah, uh, and that's in kind of an end to end. Like, how long does it take to create the snapshot? How long does it take to execute all the page ranks? And how long does it take to do the machine learning? I think that would yeah. be very interesting. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, what I show here was just uh, discrete snapshots. Mm -hmm. Actually, those snapshots are not discrete; right. they are continuous. Right. So, sure, machine learning and continuous stuff right. uh, applies here very, very nicely. Right. Oh. Two questions. First of all, I want to um, add to uh, Simon's uh, uh, 
the take on this is very interesting and uh, the collection of the reviews is very helpful. Uh, the first one is uh, you have issues of, of uh, size that I would like to kind of uh, understand. For example, your work on indexing. Um, how does the how do the indexes grow with respect to the size of the graph? Because it sounds like me that these indexes might explode with the size of the graph. Okay. You're looking at the more important, the shortest path, and you're indexing the, uh, you know, path okay. length okay. of some size. Okay. And if the graph. Actually, um, yeah. Um, okay. This is not our work to hope indexes and landmark indexes are general indexes in the area. Uh, the thing is that um, um, we don't have random graphs. In reality, so um, those indexes. Let me. Um, mo most real graphs have strongly connected components, so reachability for this kind of graphs uh, can be um, may, may be easier if you find the strongly connected components in the graph. So for a, a large amount of the nodes in the graph, um, they belong to a strongly connected component, and reachability is, is easy to to answer. I'm not sure if I am. Let me see if I understood you. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that um, those indexes work well in many cases because of the particular form of most graphs, especially graphs that result from social networks. That's what I'm trying to say. OK, we've looked at this one. We were, we've looked at some of these uh, mm. graphs. And uh, even the non-time varying graphs, when mm -hmm. we try to index uh, relationship uh, groups, cars like shortest paths and stuff like that, um, the indexes exploded at, su at such a rate that they became very fast larger than the graph itself. So um, I, mean, I would be interested if these types of indexes, what was the complexity uh, of the graph size? You are right. It's not our work, so I I'm not. Um, I'm not very confident to quote numbers. Uh, my impression is that these indexes are also large, uh, but the idea here is that you can um, selectively perhaps um, cache or use part of these graphs and um, answer queries uh, faster than doing the traversal. Um, I mean, I mean, you 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 just look up the index. It may be large, but uh, the complexity um, is uh, not. It's logarithmic on the size, for example, or it's constant on or constant because you do, just do a lookup instead of traversing. Um, well, it's not very convincing, but <laughs> I agree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, if it if it covers more, it tends to compress better. But if size causes it to be out of core, then then it's probably no good. So so there are all kinds of discontinuities in the space, and it's uh, tricky. And it's a general comment on research uh, of this kind, because uh, in most papers, it's not clear what the storage model is. So uh, the authors just say that we store it on disk, or we use there are custom implementations most of the times. There is not a system. Uh, Okay, and going back to the uh, start of the uh, talk, where you talked about uh, uh, different ways how to store a uh, graph okay. in historical, a time varying graph. Uh, we call it time varying graphs. Just, just to me. That um, the whole delta thing mm. is also explodes uh, very fast. I mean, you know, just a couple of snapshots, and then you know, yes, you're getting uh, something very big, and also. I would. I was interested with the second approach. Could you put that on? Sure. Yeah. yeah. So, how would versioning work with the same? Well, assuming you're not with a multi-edge graph, so how would the versioning work if you have the same edge removed and added a couple of times with different attributes? Okay. Uh, in this case, you do not have intervals. You have a set of intervals. Uh, if you. So I, I don't right. see. Intervals with different uh, properties. Mm -hmm. you, you yeah, the yeah. The mm -hmm. time dimension. So you have time one, two, three, four, and then you have the triple, let's say, or any other row in a database, <laughs> and then you have these rows that repeat, and they're true at time one, three, and four. Then it kind of tends to compress away. So certainly with column store techniques, uh, the space utilization can behave half nicely in those cases. 
So you, you do get the same thing over and over, and if they're sorted and tunnel-wise compressed, they kind of get to be better than they would otherwise be, but there's a whole lot of overhead. Okay, and the second question would be to um, LDBC, kind of in general. I'll use you as the figure. Um, do historical queries or, histor or time-varying graphs factor in the LDBC role? That's an interesting we, question. We got a few in the BI sure. workload. <laughs> so, I mean, time, time definitely in the current uh, SMB is already important, but SMB is not really, um, social network benchmark is not really throwing away data right now. So, it's kind of the union approach if you want. Um, but yeah, uh, so in the, in the longer haul, I think this is interesting. We got a couple. We count triangles in historical periods, and then we count triangles later, and we see if it's getting more clustered. So that's that's part of the BI workload. But um, it's not that it, we are doing a systematic exploration on all aspects of time. But certainly, edges are qualified by time, and uh, likes are qualified by time, and nose is qualified by time, and uh, so forth. But it's not uh, systematically deep, but there is a lot of time in there. In the interest of time, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'd uh, like to thank Evangelia once again.